Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Today I got a real treat for you. A 1975 Airstream Argosy 20 foot. This is a class A motorhome, class A chassis, the size of a camper van, a B van. And today I'm gonna to give you a tour inside now. But let me tell you a little bit of history about the Airstream Argosy. Airstream is a travel trailer brand that's been around since 1931. This is their 90th year this year. In the early 70s, 1974, they came out with motorhomes built with the aluminum bodies that they use with the Airstream travel trailers, but painted bodies. And they had this style from 1974 all the way until 1978. And then they transitioned in 1979 to the Accela motorhome, which had the bright aluminum finish. And they built those all the way up until 1996. And they get larger and larger throughout the years. This is the smallest one and one of the most rare because there was only 200 made. This small class A motorhome is built on the Chevrolet P30 chassis, which had a 350 V8 Chevy engine and a turbo 400 transmission. This is the same length as a standard class B motorhome, but it's wider. It's the width of a class A motorhome, which has a lot of advantages. You could pretty much drive this downtown, park downtown, fit in a regular parking spot, and still do a K turn or U turn in a street. Really cool details on this. This is a all uh, aluminum body. It has a galvanized steel front cap on the top and back, uh, but the body here is all aluminum. It's got aluminum extruded belt line protection. There's different seams here of the body. Has uh, really cool uh, vintage uh, mirrors here and uh, the wheel wheel trim. This is a lot of the stuff that they use on the travel trailers, the Airstream travel trailers they have on these Argosy motorhomes. Hollis aluminum front bumper here. And then there's a generator on board. This has an onboard generator. Uh, I didn't start it, but the story with this, this one's for sale on eBay. And the gentleman that has it for sale, I wrote to him and he said that uh, he would allow me to take a video of it and, and have it on the channel because I've been dying to have one of these on the channel for a really long time. So in the generator compartment here, uh, it's got a, a 4,000 continuous watt with a 5,000 surge. It's a, Gen uh, a Generac brand, and it has a start-start button here, but it's not uh, hooked up currently. It has thir only 38 hours on it, so really low hours. This motorhome only has 58,000 original miles, and it's one of the few original interiors that are left, so you're going to love this interior when we get inside. I'm moving a little bit further back. There's a potable water fill, so there's an onboard freshwater tank. And uh, to fill that, you stick a hose into here and it will gravity fill the tank. And then you lock it and close it when you're done. Really nice, you know, everything's plastic in today's day and age. It's really nice to see one made out of aluminum. Beautiful windows on these models. It's almost a full panoramic front window all the way around. These are sliders up here. And it has the hand riveted Airstream aluminum frames, the gutter rails on the top of the windows. It has the Airstream entry step but instead of an aluminum this is a steel version this just flips up tucks away so it's completely flush when you're driving and then to get it out you just pull this lever lock it in place and then you flip that around and flip that over you got two entry steps they got grip tape all original grip tape on them the entry door is the airstream signature entry door it's just clad here in aluminum this swings around and locks right here and it keeps it from flying around on a windy day. And then the screen door is all aluminum. It's all TIG welded. It has an aluminum bottom here. This swings around and latches in place. And there would have been a plastic piece here that fills the gap, but uh, that's in great shape. Above the door, you have a, a extruder aluminum gutter rail and then an entry door light there to illuminate this area at night. And this is all insulated and clad as well. A very wide entry door. And a lot of people, because this came around the same time as the GMC motorhomes, uh, GMC motorhomes were much lower to the ground. They had a tag axle, which has two axles in the back, and they were front wheel drive. Uh, this was quite unique. They had a similar form factor. Airstream followed the traditional travel trailer style, and GMC had their own style. So. A lot of people confuse the two with each other, but let's uh, let's head inside and, and take a look.
you can see here the original shag carpets. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure what color it was, uh, maybe dark orange or a lighter orange. Either this is stained or this faded. I would have had a fire extinguisher here by the entry door. Um, has some seatbelts here on the floor over the dinette we're gonna see in a minute. And then there's a magazine rack here by the entry door. Very open floor plan. I mean, I could stretch my arms and swing all the way around and not hit anything. There's a booth dinette here with a removable table and you're gonna see just in a little bit, this is a mother-daughter bench seat that swings around so you can have a family of four sit at this dinette. And this also converts into sleeping for two kids. Uh, has a, a aluminum clad interior, has a plastic molded front cap here, little reading lights over the cab area. I'm not sure if the curtains are original, but they, they sure do look original. You got a big slider window here. The curtain balances with the orange accent up top here. Uh, this table has different leaves that fold down, so there's hardware underneath it. So you can make it smaller. And then you could swivel it around. You could move it in different positions. You could also swing this up like this and get it out of the way. Up front here, in the mother-daughter chair, you know, you could have two people sitting here. Someone driving and the whole family could be up here and you could have people in the back. So it's, uh, it's, it's really cool. I mean, I'm just so fascinated with this motorhome. Uh, years ago, I did a tour on the 345 LE. That's the 34 and a half foot um, version. It was a, a mid eighties motorhome, but I've never been in one of these seventies Argosies. Uh, I don't know what all these switches and dials do, but I can see it has a regular AM FM stereo on board. I guess it doesn't work because they put an aftermarket stereo. It looks like that's from the early 90s. Uh, rear view mirror is all the way down here. And then there's a electric heater on board, but it has its regular dash heat. It has electric brake controller on board. So I guess they were towing either a car or a travel trailer behind them. This big hump right here, this is where the big Chevy 350 engine is. Drop, jump over to the cab area. That's a nice horn. You know, a lot of the cars have pretty quiet horns in today's day and age. Crank this thing up. Yeah, it's all carbureted. Starts first try. I mean, 58,287 miles. It's got little uh, dash vents here all still works. Uh, cigarette lighter. Uh, washers, you want to put the wiper on, it's just one side. If you want both on, you put the washer on. And now I'll bring both on. It's a two-piece windshield. And they're, uh, back then they were floating windshields. So when you drove, if the motorhome flexed, the, the windshields can move up and down independently. Uh, that's just how they did it. Now all Class A motorhomes today have a one-piece windshield. But see how this goes all the way around. So when you're driving, there's really no blind spots. I got the double mirrors on the side so I can really see what's going on. Big slider, you know, you got to pay a toll. You got a big slider window here. It'd be a long reach, but uh, definitely doable. This motorhome's just under eight foot wide and uh, it would have had controls here, uh, but it looks like they've removed uh, the voltmeter and uh, armrests come up and down. This chair also swivels, but there's a whole bunch of stuff underneath it. I don't want to move this guy's stuff out of the way, but this chair would swivel around. <laughs> you can really do some cool stuff with this. But uh, I drove it around the park a lot. You know, very responsive. Transmission shifts fine. Uh, I'm just amazed that it fires right up first try. Uh, original visors are in place. You can swing these around. It's really cool stuff. Uh, there's such a history with Airstream, and especially these motorhomes. These motorhomes in the 80s, Airstream, uh, they got together with funeral homes and they built funeral coaches. It would, it would be something like this with passenger chairs and they would put the casket in the back and it would have a hatch that opened up and you slide the coffin in and out. Kind of weird, but uh, uh, they're out there. And Airstream made them and there was a demand for them back then. And then in the 80s, Airstream partnered with NASA and they came out with some Astrovans. They built a few of the Astrovans, which are a motorhome just like this and similar in size that they could transport the astronauts. 
and uh, now they're in, in museums. A really cool piece of history. So, you know, you look back at photographs of astronauts jumping in one. That was an Airstream. That was a mid-80s Airstream. Over here, we got a, a sofa. This sofa uh, has a lot of storage underneath. So these are all timbre doors. So you got one, two, and you got three over here. And then these are all original cushions. You know, you can see, I mean, the quality, a little bit torn, but this, I mean, 1975, this is how Airstream did stuff back in the day. And this uh, lifts up and it slides out. And that's a bed right there. So uh, it's about 74 inches long and it's about 40 inches wide. So you can sleep two kids or one adult there. Uh, two big sliding windows here on the side of the sofa. And then if you lift this up, you can get access to the storage. You know, the water heater, the water pump, there's some furnace ducts. It has all the original plastic bins that came with it. Uh, this is a, a slide system they came up with back then. Simple piece of wood, aluminum rail. This slides out and that's it. And that's your bed. Really, really cool stuff. Overhead roof locker. One, two, when you bring them up all the way, there's a little notch that it locks into. Tap it, that's what brings it down. On the end cap here, it would have been another light that illuminates the driver area. This curtain would have come all the way around the cab area. It gives you complete privacy on board. There's a rail that goes all the way around both sides. And uh, you can really black out and darken out this whole motorhome here. And then over here, there's a, a light here. There's a fluorescent light that someone would have replaced at one point. Uh, this is the original light. This one here, these are incandescent bulbs up top. And then uh, more, yeah, he's got all the supplies in here. More roof lockers up top. And then there's a light here. What? Yeah, you could put multi, you can, lots of options. One bulb, three, or all of them. And there's a crank up antenna. I'm not going to do that because there is snow up on the roof. We just had a snowstorm recently. Uh, this is cool. This is, I can't do this either because there's snow up there. But there's a little fan on board here. And this cranks up and you could ventilate the inside. Uh, it is, uh, it has the optional air conditioner. So that was, uh, you know, one of the options they had available back then. Uh, this you would need to be plugged into shore power at a campground, or uh, you would have to run the generator to run the air conditioner. Um, I'm guessing this is probably about 11,000 BTU. Look at this laminate here. This is, uh, you know, total 70s right here. Uh, has the sink covers built in, but here's the, the laminate they used. Uh, double sink, original sink, most likely original faucet. Um, I didn't test the water system. It's wool winterized right now. Cool little blind here. I mean, <laughs> look at the design from back then. Uh, it's cool to see it all intact. Now, these are, these are the things that people would have swapped out. Over here, there's a 12 volt socket. So you could power 12 volt items. You could turn on and off the furnace, which actually is out of it right now. That's what it's uh, getting repaired. Uh, there's an electrical outlet here on board as well. And another cool thing. This is a spice rack back here. They happen to have the fire extinguisher sitting in it now. Stainless steel cooktop cover. So that gives you more counter space when you're not cooking. You're not always cooking. So if you want to be prepping, this will give you the extra room. And then you manually light each one of these burners and uh, it'll fire up. And it has a gas oven on board. And uh, gas ovens lost a lot of popularity in the 90s and 2000s, but they're having a comeback in the RV industry. I have one in my own personal Airstream. I use it all the time, but you would just turn it to pilot, hold it in and light it manually. And then you put your food up here. Uh, really cool to see the original oven. And then underneath the sink here, this is where the furnace would normally be. So the uh, box for the furnace would be here, the wires for it, and then it would have duct work that goes throughout the, the motorhome uh, to uh, heat the whole entire uh, platform here. There's a shelf here up top, propane leak detector down here on the floor. So if you did have a gas leak on board, that detector would go off and uh, alert you. Over here, 
This is uh, over the wheel well. So the wheel well, you know, the back wheels of the motorhome, it's a dually, it's got six tires on it. Um, that's boxed in, but it gives you additional storage and some more furnace duct work here. Uh, really cool, I think you're cooking and uh, it's smoke on board. If you open up this cabinet, you could open up this louver right here. On the outside, there's a flap that opens and then you turn on the little fan and that vents outside. So it's got uh, intake down here and then ventilation outside and you close that when you're driving. And then there wouldn't have been originally a accordion door here because this whole, this is a rear bath. So all living space is up front and then the bathrooms in the back. It's a pretty decent size. We got a sink back here, molded counter space here. It's all molded plastic, plenty of room there in a the corner. You got a towel bar here. You got a cup dispenser. Uh, toothbrush holder. This has a rear shade that comes down. That gives you that privacy. And then the windows, the same exact windows they use in the travel trailer. You can see how exciting I, I am of this. I love these motorhomes. You pull, twist, and lift. And you can go up and there's three different heights. We'll put it in the middle height now. Look at that, and it's got an aluminum frame all the way around it. Plenty of ventilation back here. You just can't leave it up when you're driving, so that has to come down. But uh, just super cool. And then original toilet here. And you know, you put your foot all the way in the paddle and that flushes it and put your foot on this one to fill the bowl. And then, you know, so you can lean your back on it when you're <laughs> on the toilet, you know, this thing here on the wall. Uh, there's a furnace duct here. Toilet paper, um, you know, inside the cabinet so it doesn't roll out all over the floor when you're driving. I just turned something on. Oh, look at that. This is the bathroom fan. So this is, uh, it vents next to the toilet. So if you're on the toilet, you can turn that on and it vents outside. I I've never seen anything before like that. It's usually on the ceiling, but that's what that is. That's uh, really cool. And then over here, this is uh, where the battery charger is and a lot of the plumbing on board, uh, some fuses and breakers. So this is a utility closet. This one over here is the wardrobe. So it has a wardrobe rod up top. They have a little fan or electric heater on board and a uh, little cooker, uh, microwave. I've never seen something that shape before. Um, up top, there's a medicine cabinet that opens. And, you know, once you get it to your height, you can lock it in, you know, and keep it open if you wanted to. This also doubles as an emergency exit if you had to get out. You just lift the window up, tear the screen out, and jump out, step on the spare tire, and head outside. Uh, the toilet has a sprayer on it, so that's so you can clean, not your bum, but clean the bowl when you're done uh, using it. And then the shower faucet, hot and cold water, this would be connected here. And then the wand, you know, holds here, but there's also a holder up top. So you could, that's where you'd have it in the position when you're showering and then when you're driving you put it down here. And then, you know, you just have to caulk these seams periodically, but I mean, it's all original. It's good shape, a little faded, a big shower. I mean, no matter, so I got my winter jacket on, but I got plenty of headroom on 5'9". There would be a regular shower curtain up here and then you could put your soap in this uh, little ledge here as well. And then this strap would be, one would be for the shower curtain, another one would have been for the privacy curtain that's missing. Uh, this is gonna be a score. These motorhomes are so desirable now that if anybody that buys one now, I would say that the next 10 years, it's gonna double and die. These are gonna be so desirable. There's nothing else like it on the market, and especially small, uh, given every the industries and the downsizing trend right now. Over here is a wardrobe, a uh, big wardrobe, and uh, looks like they replaced the floor at one point. Uh, but that's just the floor of the wardrobe, not the floor of the coach. But the wheel will be underneath there. You got a hanging wardrobe rod here, a little blanket storage up top. And it's gap, so it allows this area to ventilate out so it doesn't get all damp. And then the original Dometic refrigerator. This refrigerator is an absorption style refrigerator. So it uses gas or electric to heat up the ammonia in the back, absorbs all the heat out of the refrigerator, removes it, and uh, brings the temperature down. It takes about seven hours to cool down, but you know, you'd either put it on uh, electric mode, off, or gas mode, which is this way, which it's stuck right now. It's all right. Uh, you could change your thermostat. Uh, there, it looks like there's 
two burners here and then you pull that when you're light. I you never lit one of these older manuals. I lit manual ones from the early 2000s, but nothing like this. But I mean, super cool, super clean. It's got a little freezer compartment up top here in the bag they had here just to let it air out so it doesn't all mold up. And then this uh, little clip here they designed and that keeps the door partially open so it airs out and then also allows you to drive without the door flopping around. Above that, we have the pantry area. In the pantry, we have a gauge here, empty full. That's most likely gonna be for the fresh water tank that's on board, a uh, ledge here. Uh, they reinforced this with plywood at one point. I can understand why these get heavy. Original plastic bins. And then, you know, this might have been an option to have the pantry because it looks like it's something that was added. There's regular countertop material here on top. All original hardware and latches. Let's go back to this dinette. Before we do that, let me just show you. We have an electrical outlet here, and then we have outside porch light up top here, the one over the door, and another spotlight here. It's really cool that a lot of the stuff works in here. All right, so for the dinette, the way this works, uh, you can do a couple different things. We had it set up when we came in at the regular dinette, uh, but with this seat facing forward. So that means two people could sit here when you're driving, two people here. So if you push on two levers in the bottom, that unlocks it. Look at this. The whole thing, it's like on a double joint here. You can have it this way, you know, so if you just want to chill out in here, but it also swivels all the way around like this and then you could bring the dinette table and it locks in there's a little pin in the bottom bring this back over this lines up with this and that's what kind of locks it in when you're driving and then these flip up they're like mouse traps so you gotta be really careful and a whole family of four could sit here this one swivels like we mentioned before and then what's really cool about it is this then becomes a bed. So let's try to figure this out. Most RVs work about the same way. So we're just gonna do this on the fly, see if I can figure this out. Okay, this one's out, this is heavy. Holy, <laughs> this thing's heavy too. All right, there's a lever on the side of this chair. Okay, that released it. All right, so what we're gonna do, I got it. All right, see if seatbelts feed up through that hole right there. And then this one, Okay, that's that. And then most likely, there's some toolboxes there, but you get the picture. This folds together to one large bed here, and uh, they're both reclining position. And then when you're done, just bring it up. You lock this in place. Bring this one up. Lock that one in place. And then you can put the table in, you can store it back where it goes. But let's head outside real quick. I wanna show you some more cool stuff. Aluminum grab handle here by the entry door. So, you know, if you slip on the way out, you have something to grab onto. And then this here is a refrigerator compartment. Let's see if we, and there's so many keys that come with these things. You know, it's always like you got to take a shot in the dark to figure out if you had the right key to get in there. There we go. So, this one's on a cable here just in case you don't lock it properly. It doesn't fall off on the highway. But this is how you get to the back of the refrigerator for serviceability. Uh, and cleaning out the burners and whatnot, but nothing to ignite it or light it. And this uh, this slides up underneath the gutter rail, line everything up, make sure it's all locked in place. Dually rear tires, we talked about before, dual rear exhaust. There's one on this side, one on that side. So it's got dual exhaust. And then there's another tailpipe here. That's for that generator that's up front. It puts it all the way out the back. So you don't bring in any fumes into your windows inside. Uh, Underneath the step here, there's a propane tank. The propane tank is for your cooktop and your furnace and your water heater on board. So you could fill it here and you can on off. And there's a little gauge there 
Uh, it's all painted black at this time. But I, I crawled underneath here, the ground's a little bit wet. I couldn't see any rust. Uh, it's pretty clean. I'm not sure of the history on it before this guy had it, uh, but I'm sure whoever had it at one point was in the Airstream Club. There's a club called the WBCCI, uh, the Wally Byam Caravan Club International. That's our founder of Airstream, and he started the club and took Airstream owners on caravans in the 50s to Africa, to Mexico, uh, to Egypt. People bought these Airstream trailers and RVs. They didn't know what to do. There was not really an infrastructure of campgrounds in the United States back then. So people would buy them and really needed some direction. So he created the club to take these people all over the world. There's a lot of awesome history with Airstream. I've been working with Airstream for about 20 years now as a dealer. And uh, it's really cool to have a brand with such a history in the United States. This is a plastic molded taillight bezel. Uh, two dual taillights, reverse lights, big bumpers here. These are cast aluminum bumpers on the bumper. And then it's got a hitch back here. Uh, I don't know why it says Toyota. Maybe they had a Toyota car that they towed behind them. That's their towed vehicle. You tow it behind a motorhome. And then it has a shore power cord wrapped around. And then the spare tire, once that's moved out of the way, there's some storage back here as well. And this little tiny tire here, is probably the spare for the toad that was behind them. Because when you have a towed vehicle, it's best practice, or maybe they had a tow dolly, right? And they drive the front wheels of the vehicle on the tow dolly. This might've been the tow dolly spare tire. Uh, it's probably why it's so small. It's only 13 inches. Uh, lace and plate bracket with light. You know, you need that for DOT. Here's that rear window that we opened. Our uh, roof clearance lights up top here. And again, this is aluminum, right? And Airstream painted it. This is a galvanized steel cap on their traditional Airstream travel trailers. And when they went over to the Excella motorhome, that would have been stretch formed aluminum, all shiny and clear coated. All right, back here, uh, there's a little light here that illuminates this dump station area. So that will discharge your single tank. I only see one lever here. So it'll have a gray black tank combination. It's all insulated, I can see that. You'd pull the wastegate out snap on your waist toes here, discharge, and close it when you're done. There's a drip tube here, I know what these are, um, air conditioner on board. Uh, instead of running the condensate line down the side of the motorhome, they run it through drip tubes, because Airstream cares about the look of their product, and they don't want black streaks running down the side. All buck riveted aluminum here. You can see maybe some of the paint wore off, you can see the shiny aluminum behind it. Um, that is the cooktop vent that we opened from the inside. This would be the normal furnace discharge. They have it taped up temporarily while replacing the furnace. And this is the Atwood water heater. It's a six gallon tank, manually light it. So you turn it to pilot, hold that in that position. You'd light the pilot right there, hold it continuously. Once it ignites and stays on for a while, you can let it go and put it back to on. And then you can change, actually adjust your temperature of the water back here. And there's a drain plug here on the left side. The uh, reason I'm doing this, I'm documenting a motorhome like this because the chances of people seeing something like this are very slim. There's just so few of them out there that uh, I wanted to do this for you guys. All right, this compartment here, let me get the, the bundle of keys out. That one's unlocked. This one's locked. So that spins. That spins, flips down. This is uh, all curved, heavy gauge aluminum here. Has a hinge on the bottom. This is the toolbox. So they got old tools in here to jack the vehicle up, take the tires off, funnel for oil. Uh, everything's built in right here, even blocks that you'll need. Um, and then these luggage doors, we call them luggage doors in the industry, just spin and lock. And then uh, this one, you need the key to get it to lock again. Very important to lock all this stuff before you take off. You don't want a luggage door flying open on the highway. This one, this big one right here, is unlocked, but the just turn just enough. There we go. This swings down, and this is another discharge. I'm sorry, this is the waste hose storage tube. So the waste hose is stored in this tube. That's all it is. You just put it in here when you're done using it. And then we have low point drains to drain down the plumbing for winterization. It's all copper, so no PEX in here yet. They didn't do that yet. No plastic, uh, but that's uh, to drain it down for winterization. 
really cool. And then you line these up and lock them in place. All right. Big slider windows we saw from the inside. The big kitchen window, that does not open. It's a picture window, we call it. CB antenna, right? I was big back then in the 70s. Everybody had a CB. And the big slider window we saw inside. We'll make sure we lock that. And then this opens up, and that's how you fill your fuel tank. It's gasoline engine. This probably gets about five to seven miles per gallon or more. You know, if it's a more tuned and modern engine, it would. And then they have a... Maybe that's radio, and this is CB antenna, but there's two antennas on board. And then up front here, look at the front grill. I mean, this is a very aggressive look. You see this in your rear view mirror when you're driving down the highway. I mean, that's just cool looking. I like the, the line here in the middle. You know, it's all plastic grill, but it's held up very well. And then if you have to check your fluids, there's two little latches here. You pull, and then you swing down. And that gives you access. You can see the horns here, they're pretty loud, we heard them. Engine coolant, you could uh, check there. Power steering fluid. Uh, this is the actual radiator itself. Engine oil dipstick. These are two big batteries here. So it's unclear whether one is engine and one is house batteries. I didn't see that in the back, but that could potentially be what's going on here. And then the controls for like the wipers and everything, but everything's accessible through this hatch. And then you get the big engine hatch on the inside. And then if you want to hook a, like a battery tender up to it and charge the battery, there is a battery charger inside and then there's positive negative you can hook up outside. And then, uh, you know, you could step on this bumper. That's why they designed it. And you can clean your windshield from up here. It's got big roof clearance lights on the front. Yeah, it's just super, super amazed. Uh, the color's a little bit off in the camera. It's like a, like a beige color. It's not yellow. Uh, it's beige, brown, orange. Liz Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, and subscribe. I love it, and we'll see you soon.